Hi, I'm Sarah with the Volusia County Public Library System, coming to you from the Ormond Beach Regional Library. And on this episode of Volusia Gets Crafty, I'm going to show you how to crochet a corner-to-corner -corner style throw. Now, this is a very popular pattern. I think it's due to the fact that it's so versatile. Um, you can change the look of these blankets dramatically just by altering your color combinations. So the yarn that we're going to be using today is called an ombre yarn, which means that it's going to gradually transition from lighter to darker hues of the same color but feel free to experiment with other color combinations as you desire. You can look in the description box below to see where to get a free copy of this pattern for yourself. I've got a couple books that you can check out from the library, but if you're looking for corner to corner books specifically, I'd recommend checking Hoopla or Digital Platform. They've got a couple great titles there where you can see just exactly what this pattern is capable of. So whenever you're ready, why don't you grab a hook and some yarn, and let's go get started. Okay, so today we're gonna to start working on our corner to corner style throw. Now, it's a little different from projects we've done in the past because it works in a diagonal instead of going back and forth with rows. So I kind of brought in some little papers to show you visually how it's gonna look. You're gonna do clusters of double crochet, so they'll, they'll make like blocks. And so you'll do one, and then you'll build another row on either side of it going diagonal. And then your next row will build upon that, just like that. So that is how it's gonna keep growing as you go corner to corner. So we'll kind of keep this out as our, as our guide. But um, to get started, we're gonna start by chaining six. So I've got a slip knot on my hook, and I'm gonna chain up six. And then we're gonna yarn over, and we're gonna put a double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook. So skip three and go into the fourth chain, and put a double crochet and then put a double crochet in each of the remaining two chains. So this will be like our first block of the corner to corner, that pink square. Okay, so we've got the three double crochets and then those chains that you skipped. So next what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn our work and we're gonna chain six again. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. We're gonna do the same thing where we yarn over and we go into the fourth chain from the hook. So skip one, two, three, go into the fourth, and put a double crochet, and then a double crochet in each of the next two. So it kind of turns a little bit as you first start it, but you'll get the hang of it once we go along the project kind of if you need to turn that chain back to see the ones that you skipped. Okay, so this is like the second block right here that we're putting right on top of the, the first one. But you can see it's kind of wobbly, right? So you need to anchor it. We're gonna anchor it to this first one that we started with and you see that chain that we made? We're gonna go and slip stitch right into that chain space. So pull through and pull through and that will anchor it onto that original block that we made. Then we're gonna chain up three, and that counts as a double crochet. We're gonna put three more double crochets in that same space. There's one, two, and three. Okay, so that was our second block that we put in. Okay, so this, see how that's working? What we're gonna do is turn our work, and we're gonna do it again. So we're gonna chain up six. Okay, yarn over. We're gonna go into the fourth chain from the hook. So skip one, two, three, and into the fourth one. Put a double crochet. And like with all of our other projects, you guys, it'll get easier as you've got more project to hold on to. But then into the next two chains, you're gonna put a double crochet in each of them. Okay, just like before, this one is kind of dangling, so we wanna anchor it onto this one. So do you see that, that chain space right there? So you're gonna put a slip stitch. You'll anchor it to that product, part of the project. Then, so we've just completed 
our square here, our third one onto the edge. So now the next one is going to go right here in this space. We're building the, the, the blocks. So we're going to chain up three. Oh, I'm catching my other square. So there's chain of three, and then we're going to put three double crochets in that same space. Okay, so we've just made this block here. And we need to anchor it because it's kind of hanging loose. So we want to anchor it to the top chain space of this one with a slip stitch. And we need one more square to complete our diagonal. So right. we're going to chain up three and put three more double crochets in that same space. So we're growing our corner to corner. Right now we have three blocks. Each successive diagonal will have one extra block. And you'll keep growing it until you reach the width of the project that you, you want. So you'll kind of hold it up to your lap and when it's big enough to cover you, then you'll start decreasing it. And I'll show you that in a minute. But we're gonna go through one more time and I will show you how to do this next row just so you get a little bit more practice. So you're going to chain six, do six, one, two, three, four, five, six, yarn over, go into the fourth chain from the hook, and put a double crochet, double crochet into each of the next two chains. I'm messing up my little grid here. <laughs> I don't know if that's helping you guys or not, but it kind of helped me to see when I was first learning corner to corner how that worked. So there's my three double crochets and then that chain. We're going to anchor it to the first one, the top of that, in that chain space. And then you're going to chain up three, three double crochets into that space. Okay. And then we're going to anchor it to the next top of the chain three in that space, chain up three, and three double crochets in there. Anchor it into this chain space at the top of this cluster, chain three, and three double crochets. So the only time you're going to be chaining six is when you're growing it at the end, at the start of your next row. So you'll turn and you'll change six and you'll, you'll grow it. So I'm going to let you keep going on just like that and I'll show you, I'm going to do a couple rows to make it a little bit bigger and then I'm going to show you how you can start decreasing it. Okay, so I've just completed a couple more diagonal rows of the corner to corner blanket. <laughs> um, obviously I'm not going to do the whole blanket on camera, I've already got that and I can show you again at the end. But what happens is eventually you're going to reach a width that is right for you and you're going to want to stop it from getting bigger because right now all we've got is a big triangle so we want to now fill in the rest of it. Um, so the next block instead of growing it next to it we're going to put it right up here. Okay. Now the problem is is that our, our hook is down here so we need to move up to this corner to start this block. So what we're going to do is we're going to slip stitch. So we've got Hold on. I think I forgot one. I'm going to put one, one more double crochet. I only had two double, two double crochets in there. So I should have my three. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to slip stitch into the next two double crochets of that grouping that I finished with. So I'm going to just slip stitch into the tops of those stitches. Okay, and then you're going to slip stitch into this chain space, okay, because that's where we're going to work from. So now we're ready to, to make this box that's right here. So we're going to chain up three and put our three double crochets into that same space like we've been doing. But by slip stitching to that corner, it's stopping it from growing outward and it's just going to go up. So that'll be the width of your project. 
So then we'll just do the same like we've been doing and we'll slip stitch into the top of that space, chain up three, and do your three double crochets, slip stitch to the top of this space, and continue on and I'll show you what, what you need to do if you wanna make this a square and then I'll show you also how you can make it a rectangle if you prefer. Okay, so I've made my way up this diagonal and if I wanted to make this into a square, you can see I would stop at this point because if I put, if I put another one up here, it would keep growing it. We don't want it to grow anymore because we want the sides to get flat, right? So then we would stop right there if we wanted to make it into a square. We would turn our work and we would do like we did before. We would slip stitch into the next um, stitches, the tops of those stitches to get back to the corner. So just like this. And then you would slip stitch into this space. And then you would do your chain three. And then you'd put your three double crochets into that same space. Okay. Then you would anchor it onto the next chain space at the top and then you'd keep going. And then when you'd hit this side, you'd stop. When you hit this empty space, you'd flip it and keep going, gradually decreasing until you reach the corner. Now, if you wanna make this into a rectangle, I'll show you what you would need to do for that. All right, so if you wanted to make this into a rectangle, instead of stopping here like we did for the square, we would wanna keep it growing, right? Because this would be our width that we wanted but a rectangle has one longer side. So this side would still need to grow. So you would keep growing this side as normal. And what I like to do is take a stitch marker um, so that I remember which side I wanted to stop growing. So this was the, the side that I was happy with the width. So I would just stick a stitch marker into some of the fibers on this side. So I knew when I got to this side, I don't grow it anymore, it stays flat. But when I get to this side, I'm gonna keep growing it. So when I would turn it for a rectangle, I would continue on with the chaining of the six, right? Because I wanna keep it growing. And then I would yarn over and go into the fourth chain from the hook and do that to keep that side active. And then I would hook it on to that space with a slip stitch to anchor it. And then I would chain up my three. I would keep going. And then once I reach this side, remember it has our stitch marker? So this side isn't gonna grow. So I would end here. I wouldn't add on any extra. And then you would flip it. So that is how you do a rectangular version of the corner to corner. So I've brought in my larger example again. So you can see how we've got all these little blocks and how they fit together going diagonally up the, uh, the, the, the blanket. And if you pull them apart, you can kind of see how that goes back and forth like that. Now what's fun with the corner to corner is that if you don't want to make one big blanket, you can make smaller corner to corner squares and they're going to all be diagonal. And what happens is, is that you can play around with it when you attach them together and rotate some. So you can make different like geometric shapes um, out of the, the corner to corner blankets. You can also make graph gans out of them too. I, I haven't gotten into that, but I've seen some really cute ones. Uh, once again, I'd like to encourage you to visit Hoopla because we have a couple really great um, digital eBooks that you can look at to see what, what you can do with this pattern because it is very versatile. Um, in the meantime, you can find videos like this and more on Volusia Library's YouTube channel. I wanna thank you for joining me today and I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.